Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is a mini lesson on constructing explanations with evidence level one, observational explanations. The icon for explanations is this puzzle that's solved, and that's essentially what an explanation is. In nature, when we see a phenomena, something that we don't understand, we start to ask ourselves questions, and the biggest question we ask is, how does it work? And so your first step is always to identify the phenomena and then you should have a question, and a lot of the time that question is, what causes the phenomena, or how does that phenomena work? As we think about the parts of an explanation, an explanation is going to be an answer to that question. It's gonna tell us how the phenomena works. But a good explanation doesn't just start with what you think, it starts with careful observations of the phenomena, and then you use some logical reasoning to connect those observations to the explanation itself. After watching this video, you should be able to construct explanations with evidence for phenomena like this cutting board and the cuts that are found on it, or how does a, a shadow puppet work. I'm gonna start by showing you my constructing explanations around this candy jar, and then you'll have a chance to do the same with these baseballs that are found here. And so let me clean up and we'll get started. Okay, so the explanation that we're gonna to try to figure out is what's going on with this candy jar. So this candy jar has some Skittles in it, and I don't know if you can see the different colors of Skittles that are in there, but that's going to be our phenomena that we're gonna to try to figure out. And so I'm gonna write the phenomena up here in the corner. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna write down what is the question? And so if you didn't really figure out what was going on, in the candy jar, then you probably don't eat a lot of Skittles, but I'm gonna write up there what the question is. So the question that we're trying to answer is what happened to the candy jar? So the explanation is simply gonna be an answer to that question. But a lot of time, and, and for some of you, you don't even know what's going on with the candy jar. And so we always start with the observations. We always start with the evidence before we actually go to the explanation. So I'm just gonna start writing down some observations that I notice as we look at the Skittles that are found in the candy jar itself. And so let me write one of those down. So my first observation is that there are three colors of Skittles found in the candy jar. We've got orange, we've got green, and then we've got purple. Um, for the next thing, I'm actually gonna look at the bag of Skittles. So I'm gonna look at the bag of Skittles and I'm gonna notice something right away. Okay, so one thing that I noticed right away is on the bag there are five different colors of Skittles. So we not only have the orange, the green, and the purple, so we can see those there, but we also have the yellow and we have the red. And I may wanna look inside the bag as well. So if I look inside the bag, I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but you can see inside there I see some yellow Skittles and I see some red Skittles as well. So now you're starting to kind of figure out what's going on with the candy jar. Um, let me write one more observation that I think would be important for a good explanation. So another observation I found is that when I took the candy jar out, I didn't find any stray Skittles just sitting around the candy jar. So the candies, uh, the Skittles were just in the candy jar or they were in the bag itself. And so now that I've gone through and made some observations, I'm ready to come up with an explanation. An explanation is simply an answer to the question. So let me write down what my explanation is. So my explanation is that someone took the red and the yellow Skittles out of the candy jar. Now I don't have good observations. Was it that they liked that color? or Maybe they didn't like that color, but I do have good observations since it was found inside the bag, but not in the candy jar that some of them took them out. So an explanation is just an answer to the question. I've got some observations, but now we get to the hardest part of constructing an explanation with evidence is you have to come up with reasoning. And so what is reasoning? A way to think about reasoning is reasoning is a logical connection. How can I connect these observations to this explanation that I have? And so let me start writing some of that out. And so let me start with the first part. So 
So my first part of reasoning really addresses these two observations. The idea that I see a different color, a set of colors in the candy jar than I do in the bag. That means essentially it's telling me there should be red and yellow in the jar unless some kind of had been removed. Now if there weren't that many, let's say there were only three candies in here, that would make sense. But the fact that there are so many candies here and in the bag, but the red and yellow are here, that's good reasoning that someone took the red and the yellow Skittles. Now we have to figure out what reasoning could I use with this and let me show you. So this next observation that there were no stray Skittles around the candy jar tells me that the candies weren't spilled. Somehow we didn't lose the red and the yellow because of that. And so that would be my reasoning. And so if I were to, if you were to ask me what is my explanation with evidence, you just read an explanation from left to right. So someone took the red and yellow Skittles. I had three colors in the candy jar, five colors inside the bag and there should be red and yellow in the jar unless some were removed. I also found no stray Skittles around the candy jar and that tells me that the candies weren't spilled so then you can go back to the explanation that someone took the red and the yellow Skittles out. Now this reasoning is hard. It's going to be a really hard in science and so you want to practice it with concrete examples. So now that I've done this what I'm going to do is clean this up and I'm going to give you a another phenomena that you can try. Okay, for the next phenomenon, you can see we have these three baseballs that are right here. So what I would encourage you to do is pause the video, write down the phenomena, the questions, some observations and explanation and reasoning, then unpause the video, come back and I'll show you my explanation with observations. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to write down what is the phenomena that, what I'm tr that, that I'm trying to figure out. So let me write that down. So the phenomena that I have is that we have these three different baseballs. They look clearly different. And now let me write down the question. Okay, so the question that we're going to try to answer is why do the baseballs look so different? We're going to come up with an explanation or an observational explanation. And so the next thing that I want to do, remember, is we don't jump right to the explanation. We just start writing down what are some observations that we have. Okay, so the observations that I wrote is that ball A is white and has no scratches. Ball B is tan and has smudges and scratches. And then ball C is brown. I noticed that it doesn't have a logo on it, has many scratches, and it also has some stitching that is broken right here. So now that I've gone through and made a bunch of observations, the next thing I want to do is I want to come up with an explanation, which is basically tells me why the baseballs look so different. So let me write down my explanation. Okay, so my explanation is that baseball B and C have been played with. And so I could even go out and say I think C has probably been played with even a little bit more. So that's my explanation. But the next thing I have to do, remember, is for each of these observations, I have to come up with reasoning. And that reasoning should connect these observations back to the explanation. So let me show you some of my reasoning. Okay, to show you my two kind of strands of reasoning, my first reasoning, the way I think A is important is I learned that if a ball is new, it's going to be white in color. It's also not going to have any scratches on it. So we can think of this as a new ball. That's the, what the evidence or the observations on ball A are. And then the observations on B and C, I said, as baseballs are played with, they get dirty and damaged when you hit them or 
Maybe they uh, get hit into the dirt. And I said, since ball B and C show dirt and damage, they've been placed with. And so my explanation or observational explanation is that B and C have been played with. I've got observations on each ball. And since I know that A is new, and I know that the other ones are not white, that they've been played with. And so a, a good observation or an observational explanation kind of is read from left to right. And so now that you've learned how to do that with the baseball, you could go ahead and try one of the samples down below. I've got some slides so you could try to do this one with the cuts in a cutting board and figure out what happened to that, or even figure out what happens to cause a shadow puppet. But those are observational expl explanations and I hope that was helpful.